And we are back with another edition here of Players Only. Lucky to be joined by Anze Kopitar. Anze, thank you for joining us. Your son Jacob there, how old is he and how cool was that to have him read the lineup there? That was really cute. Uh, he just turned seven uh, a few weeks ago. But, uh, yeah, I thought he did a great job. Quite honestly, he probably did a better job than half of our uh, locker room. So, <laughs> uh, it, was, it was great. It was a very... Obviously, a very special night, but that, that put the cherry on top, that's for sure. Yeah, he was great. Not a lot of nerves there. So, we were talking before the show, we we're doing a lot of prop bets here, and we we're doing it. We were thinking it over under on how many goals uh, you've scored on me in your career, because usually it's a lot when we talk to guys. So, we wanted, to get, we wanted to get a guess on how many you think you got past me. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we did have Edmonton's number for, for a little so bit. So did the rest the of the league. <laughs> hey, don't worry about that. The rest of the league had the number two. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'd probably go about, what, maybe not double digit, but six or seven. Okay. Maybe. I don't know the exact number. All right. Well, the producers pumped my tires a little bit. It's only two somehow. <laughs> oh. Yeah. When they, brought, right. when, they brought, when they brought up to me, I was like, God, it's going to be like 15. So it was only two, but that's where we started. I guess it was more of a passer, though. Yeah, all right. Well, yeah, I'm all sure right. you passed a few to a guy, some guys that put it by me, though. All uh, right, and, uh, and uh, we just got to watch your kid. Now I remember this this young kid at a World Championships in 2004, I believe it was, playing for Slovenia. I think you're about 16 oh, years old or something like that at that point. Can you talk to me of what it would have been like at that age playing against a bunch of NHLers. It was very surreal, actually. I think it was, was it 2005 in Austria? Oh, five, yes, that's it, that's I, it. I think so. Yeah, and I was still wearing a cage because I was 17 years old. And uh, I'm facing off against you and, you know, Team Canada. And the, the, every team was, was stacked because it was the lockout year. So I guess everybody missed hockey. And it was, I mean, just what an experience for me. It was so surreal. And then... Quite frankly, to to, I guess play against you guys uh, a couple of, couple of years later, I would have never thought. But uh, yeah, I guess it was a great uh, a, a great tournament for me. Uh, probably not so team wise because we got pumped a, a bunch of times. But uh, you know, it was it was a great experience. So I have a world championship uh, experience against Slovenia as well. Uh, playing against your brother is Gaspar. Is that right? Is that how you say it? That's right. Yeah. yeah so that's right. So we were at World Championships, and we Team Canada they print out a sheet before uh, in the morning of every game, and it was it was uh, there okay. were 600 and some uh, registered minor hockey players in Slovenia, and in Canada there was 680,000 registered yeah. minor hockey players, and and we go into this game, and Sounds it, it about was right. And so I'm playing the game, and it's it's boom boom, it's two nothing. For, for Slovenia right away, and it was 2 nothing for, like, a lot of the game. And we went into <laughs> overtime, and, and th this stat was all I could think about in my head was the 680 <laughs> versus 680,000. And I was like, okay. I'm, I'm going to be the guy. But um, we, yeah. we managed to – Stamkos got us one in overtime, so we, we snuck one out. But you guys uh, – you guys you weren't there at the time. I think you were in playoffs. But uh, how's your brother doing? Yeah. What's he, where's he playing now? Yeah. Uh, he's doing good. He's he's retired now, but he works for the Junior Kings program here uh, here in LA. So nice. he's coaching the U18s, and uh, yeah, he's trying to get into coaching, and he's doing a, a, a really good job. And uh, he actually was working with our dad uh, in the last year's World Championships. So uh, uh, you know, both uh, him and and my dad, they were they were coaching together in Riga, uh, and yeah, I. Unfortunately, I didn't make it, but uh, they, they had a ton of fun. All right, and, and now I got to ask, you know, Doobie and I were lucky enough to get traded a lot, and we played for a bunch of other teams. Not only that, <laughs> but I think combined we were about 34 games short of where you're at now and games played. You got to play this 1,298 games with one organization. It's absolutely incredible. I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one to say I'm flat-out jealous. What's that been like for you to just play and grow up in your whole career as a king? I mean, obviously the the whole experience. It, you know, I'm pretty sure everybody says it, uh, but it, it kind of flew by, right? I mean, you you come. I came in as a 19 year old, and uh, you know, my my first captain was Matty Nordstrom, and then Rob Blake after that. I mean, now he's he's my boss, obviously. So, uh, you know, the time kind of goes by, and 
you know, I, I don't think it quite hit me yet uh, to how, I guess, easy and nice I had it. Um, you know, obviously there were some hard times in L.A. too, but uh, some very fun times with winning a couple of cups. And, you know, just to stay in one place, it just makes it so much easier for, obviously, for me, my family, both of my kids were born here. So, um, you know, just... I guess the convenience of it, of, of not moving, not have to worry about schools, not have to worry about anything else. It's just uh, being super nice. And I guess Manhattan Beach is, uh, there's there's worse places to, to live in too. Well, you certainly earned the right to be there and be the, the, the guy for that franchise for so long. Congratulations. We're going to get into something here. It's called What Were You Thinking? So we're going to take a look at a few pictures here and ask you, what were you thinking? Uh, but- Oh, NHL debut, Anze. Two goals yeah. in one game. It t- takes a, let, me, let me tell you, it takes a special player to get two goals in one game. Yeah, that was a little not-so-subtle brag on my own part there. All right, hey, <laughs> what were you thinking here in this picture? Look, I love this enthusiasm, this excitement. What were you thinking? I mean, yeah, that was, that was actually my second goal, and Thority was uh, – he actually played uh, on the same team uh, during the lockout in Sweden, so I've known him from before. Uh, familiar face, obviously gave him a big, big hug after after the goal I scored, and, you know, I was excited. It's just obviously a dream come true to, you know, play in your first NHL game, but to, to score a couple goals made it obviously extra special. All right, coming up next here, we have your OT winner. <laughs> In 2012, what were you thinking right before you put the puck in the back of the net here? Oh, boy. You know what? I, I remember that game being very hot and humid in Jersey. So I was I was tired. And then as I jumped in the glass, I, I cramped up hard. So I was happy to... <laughs> I was Just happy to, to... Yeah, yeah. I was happy to end the game, obviously, to win the game but also to get back in the room and, and rest a little bit because I remember so the I, I was I was tired. So it was, uh, I guess it was a good goal to to finish it off. All right, and Anze, this one, this one gives me chills. Bringing your Stanley Cup back to your home country. Talk to us about that. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was very special, obviously. Um, you know, after I landed, uh, after the season, I didn't even have the, the cup with me yet, but there was about four or 5,000 people just waiting at the airport just to, to greet me. So that was special. And then when the cup showed up, we had about, I think it was about 15,000 people in my home village. I mean, there was people from all over the country that, that uh, came to, to see the cup. And, yeah, very special. Uh, I don't think Bolte in the picture was very happy because he had to run a tight ship with, with security. But, uh <laughs> No, it was it was fun. It was great for me and my family. Obviously, a uh, uh, great experience, and hopefully, we get to uh, get a few more memories like that. Absolutely. Well, speaking of memories, we got one more for you here. This is you and the little ones. How cool is it to watch them grow up and get them to be? You know, we saw Jacob at the start, but have them be a part of of uh, what you're doing. Yeah, this is actually in uh, I believe in Colorado Springs. That was our outdoor game at uh, Naval Academy. So I was fortunate enough for my wife, Enos, and, uh, you know, my, my daughter, Nasia, and my son, Jakob, to, to come out there. And the outdoor games are known for the family skate, so they, they brought their gear, and it was just great time spending with them. Well, thanks so much for coming on. We could spend a lot more time with you here, but we know you got a flight to catch, some more important stuff to do, but we appreciate you coming out, and good luck, and we'll talk to you soon.